Once we got to Chicago, every day was big. This is an American city, and they gave it to Bay like play. It's your sandbox. We're doing stuff in downtown Chicago that's never been allowed before. This is the biggest thing to film in Chicago ever. How they are able to do that blows my mind. It's like, that doesn't happen. I knew Chicago was going to get it. I mean, I know they do fireworks here twice a week, but boy, we have a whole different kind of fireworks. We were looking at different cities just to see like a different look other than Los Angeles, because he loves Los Angeles and filming here, but he wanted something different. So I think when he saw Chicago, and it's a pretty spectacular looking city, so once he saw it, he was like, oh, this is it. Chicago was the most amazing city in terms of what they gave us, the amount of access, the amount of closures. Michigan Avenue is a, a street that they said they've only closed twice in the history of Michigan Avenue. They closed the bridge once for Oprah Winfrey and once for me. <laughs> we shut Chicago down for a good uh, month and a half. Six weeks we were in Chicago, and we didn't leave anything unturned, really. We did Chicago. <laughs> We turned the streets of Michigan Avenue into sort of 9-11-esque World War III eruptions all down the streets with rubble and falling buildings and burning cars and crushed light poles and that sort of thing. We could only get the streets, the big destruction scenes on the weekend, and in a very limited amount of time, and it was usually all night, is when we had to set up these massive scenes of mayhem and debris and destruction. We had all the larger pieces on wheels, so we could tow them in at night, tow them out the next morning. A lot of it's polystyrene, and we made it as light because we had to maneuver them. So we certainly made everything as light as possible just for maneuverability. Then my team came in with mobile rubble and smaller rubble. There was another team that came in and placed cars and burning cars. Some of those scenes have 80 and 90 cars in them, and they all have to be prepared in certain ways. Some of the cars that they wanted burning on set have to be stripped of all interior, all upholstery, all plastic, anything that would give off toxic fume if you burn them. So those are stripped completely and burn bars are put in so the special effects can bring flames up and take them down as necessary. Anything that's going to be flipped over, we have to pull motors, transmissions, gas tanks so you can burn them without any danger. Other cars would be wrecked on scene. It was a massive, coordinated effort that, given the scope of what we were doing, it went surprisingly well. But then there was one night when it rained, and rained, and rained, and rained, and we had eight inches of rain. And I thought, we're never going to make six o'clock. But then the sun came out, and everyone thought nothing of it, but it was actually a horrendous night. It was horrible. <laughs> The first weekend, we, we were dressing La Salle, and we had two blocks to dress, which we started at 8 o'clock. And then we finished that at 6, the crew came in, and then we moved up two more blocks to do the next section in daylight. But Michael decided that he wanted a lot more than that, and in fact, I think at the end of the day, we dressed about eight blocks. The question is never if Michael decides to change his mind, it's when he's going to change his mind because it's going to happen. How about we do this? We're changing. How about <laughs> now the bombs go off? <laughs> no, <laughs> Changing back. Changing back. Not changing. <laughs> Michael will change things on the day. He will dream up other sets that we have to do in the afternoon. It's been difficult. There's beauty in the fact that everything is a bit malleable here. It's the way that Mike works. Like, you ask Mike how deep he storyboards, it's not that heavy. He gets on set and sort of creates. Once he arrives at some place, and because Michael's such a visualist, that when he sees it, then he sculpts how he wants to shoot it. I'd love to come up over this car. Give me something where like, Tyrese can step on this, he can jump over this, you know, boom. This is slippery here, so we gotta be careful here, all right, guys? And we should move this up a little bit, okay, guys? Okay. Not many directors have the confidence to not prepare the way Mike does. 
He's super prepared, but not in a to a T way. Michael's always improvising. He's always adding things. You know, he'd come in on the day and be very inspired by this or that. And wow, all of a sudden, you know, we're turning left when we thought we were going right. Why is your timing so different on these two cars? I think these this event should go together. Anything you want, but that's what you gave me. Uh, well, they yeah, should go together. Well, I gave it to you. Wrong, I don't care. Guys, I'm just going plenty. Not, all right. But we got to tell everybody. I know. So let's figure it out. He prepares enough to be able to have a malleable environment on set. And that's why this crew is incredible is they need to adapt to whatever Mike's thinking when he's on set. Art department, right here. help us out, man. I think what I like to do is push in. Move all this shit, guys. Give me some fires by this truck right here. Give me some stuff, right? Clear all those other cars, put them on the other side so officers can rip around so fast. We just came up with a little motto, and our motto was ATT, ATT. That's all the toys all the time, because we never knew what we were going to shoot. I mean, we have technocranes here every day, regardless if we're doing hand inserts or not because Mike might want to do a hand insert through the roof of the building. You have to have an A, B, and a C plan, and be prepared that there might be a D plan that you don't know about. Three, two, one, go! Do it again, and go! Three, two. Hit it. Get ready. Time. Get ready. Hit it. You're gonna hit it on this one, guys. Go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> we cut. We cut. Um, we cut that. <laughs> and this is the way the man works. See, and, and the reason his movies look the way they do is because he works that way. You just gotta be able to swing with it or you're doomed. <laughs> art department, help us out here. Where's Art Department? Art Department, I need people following me around when we're doing this shit, okay? One of the things that Michael wanted was to try to do a lot less in the computer when it comes to all the destruction and all of the action that's gonna happen. Michael Bay loves special effects. <laughs> He likes to do it real and on film, right there. He loves what we do and he's constantly calling for us and calling for me. Okay, Schwab, 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 hey, hey, Schwab, can we burn anything around here or no? Schwab, start the fires. Hey, Schwab, I want to see you start rigging that over here right now. Schwab, hey, let's talk about the cues. When we first got there, we had two or three cases of 3F black powder, which we'd wrap our own bombs and make it up. boxes of black powder. We went through so much powder on that movie, we were worried about running out again. seen more people turned out to watch shooting of a film. A lot of times people show up, there's really very little payoff, but they had plenty of great stuff to see. It was mobs and mobs of people. They estimated something like 25 or 30,000 people were around watching, not to mention all the people that were up in the, probably the buildings around watching that. I thought it would be a nightmare, but what we did, Gabriella, the publicist, took our actors in a golf cart blocks away to the fans, because it looked like Universal Studios there. Every day you would show up, you'd be, it was like being a rock star. It was like a concert. The fact that the fans are out there while we're blowing up all of this stuff and doing all these big action scenes, it gives us energy. Oh, we got more cheers from those Chicago uh, tourists. You wouldn't believe it. It was great. It makes you feel good. They appreciate what we're doing. We'd do a, a little thing and they'd cheer, and then we'd do a giant thing and they'd just come roaring. The challenge is to try and get them to be quiet until we're done. <laughs> it was fun to be a part of that and to know that they were as excited as we were making it. One, two, three! <laughs> 
think one of the ways that the third movie was different than the second and particularly the first movie was being the first two we tried really hard to protect the content and not to show the cars and not to let the characters be seen and when you shoot a day exterior movie in the center of a city it's impossible it's literally impossible so Conversely, we just embraced it. It was almost like Universal Studios there. It was like a tour. I was seeing the explosions and the stuff going on, and there were thousands of people were watching. You know, so we tried to involve them. Thank you, everybody. Go watch the movie. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Good job, everybody. Lucas, we got to talk. I love being in Chicago. I thought the our crew and cast had a really good time there because, you know, it's a big city, there's lots going on there. And I, I think everybody sort of reveled in the in the, the moment that we had of making that size film in a major metropolitan city. sure where else we could have done what we did as successfully as we did in Chicago just because of the level of cooperation we had. Mayor Daly, I'm sorry. We did off my promise. And you gotta stay here. You gotta be here for the next 15 okay. minutes. It's I great will. stuff. Thank you. Ready? Here we go. And reason that they did allow us to do a lot of the stuff was, was because of our reputation, you know, that we do care and that we're not just a bunch of cowboys coming in blowing up their city. The thing that was really cool was we shot a scene on the South Street at the Board of Trades for five city blocks and the next day you never know we were there. It was really a great experience and we can't thank the Chicago Police Department enough and, and and the fire department and everyone in Chicago, the people as well, for, for all the support of the film. It was just such a great experience and um, I look forward to going back. It was the best city experience I've ever had in my life. A lot of really good memories with the fire and the police. And everyone was in a happy mood. They're nice there. They all say hello. They're, they're really polite. It made it a good city experience. They don't get much more beautiful than this, do they? <laughs> <laughs>